Oh, yeah, that's right. It is amazing. It happens when I wake up in the morning. Sometimes. I don't feel like going back to sleep. I wonder when I actually get ready for work. Oh, wait a second. Hello, everyone. Yes, I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. As you can tell, it's, it's, it's a weird morning. Because I have my glasses on. And I don't feel like putting my contacts in quite yet. So I'm not as dapper looking. And... It's, well, it's getting cloudy now. Darn it. So I turn the light off, so again, a little bit better view. Welcome back. This is going to be a little two-part show. Um, unfortunately, it's too early for Dr. Tom to show up. So this is going to be kind of an interesting two-part show, I think. Because first, we have to talk about AEW. And eventually, I have to get ready for work. So, <laughs> so this has to be somewhat quick. Um, AEW starts off as it always does. Pyro, because Pyro is good, and I'll let this thing do its video magic when I'm at work. I have two jobs today, so I figured, oh, I can't do that. In fact, I have to do that too. I have to eat before work somehow. Have a decent sit down dinner. So we'll see what happens. I think it's Thursday because it's 10. Because Thursdays are my Fridays, for the most part. What's up, what's up, AEW? I do apologize for being yawny. Hey, I woke up. Oh, no, it's It's 11 o'clock. Last night I said, I'll do this video tomorrow after work. Well, I have to go to my second job. So that means I better get this done now. And I woke up, I'm like, I'm ready to go. And then I was watching useless YouTube videos, and I'm like, I want to go back to sleep. Nope, I want to be up, because I just have two hours at my one job, and go to my other job for five, and actually get a decent paycheck next week. Always good, because I've yet to be monetized on YouTube. One day I will be, though. I'll be like, fuckers. Uh, so that's about AEW. The first part, that's about Pac versus Trent Beretta. Interesting match because normally Trent is a tag team specialist and AEW is really tag team heavy. I'll tell you what, AEW they've specialized in tag teams and they do the best with tag team work, although some of their singles is really good. And this was actually a really good show. And more important than that, this was actually the go home show for Full Gear, which is this Saturday. And I think we're going to have a little cooking special. I am going to make some... Well, I have to do that, too. But I am going to make... Because I had Taco Bell last night. Maybe that's the reason why I'm up early this morning. But I'm going to make homemade punch wraps. Because the only thing I have to do is still get some lettuce and some pico de gallo. And I'll be all set. I'll be interested. So, again, this was interesting because normally Trent comes out with Chuck as part of the best friends. And now, are they being managed by Orange Cassidy? I don't know. I get Orange Cassidy. It's just, he doesn't do much for me because, well, he doesn't do much. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, to start off the match, Pox like, what and his And his uh, Welsh or Jordy, I think they call it, accent. And you can see him, see him literally say, uh, Pack eventually walks down Trent. I mean, they, Trent can run the ropes like anything. This is great when you have two athletic stars like this and Trent and Pac. The rope running is amazing. They do flips over each other. It actually seems realistic and not so much choreographed, so it's pretty cool. Because I know Pac tried the monkey flip. Trent just kind of did a roll over him. Eventually, all that rope running leads to a back elbow. It's really cool. Um, Pac did get caught. Oh, and a draping Northern Lights suplex. That was awesome. Probably the Northern Lights suplex. Besides a high German suplex. It's just amazing. Uh, then Pac, when Pac is on the outside, though. Ooh, he's vicious. He was just flinging Trent around every barrier. Those that get ringside seats, beware. You might be taking a wrestler home. Because an impact, you take stuffed animals home. But an impact over in, in AEW might take a wrestler home. 
Uh, then Pac, of course, can fly like anything. Uh, Trent did the Ric Flair over the rope thing. That was kind of funny. Orange Cassidy, he, he tried his sweet shin music. He just got his head kicked off by Pac. Pac was like, the hell is this garbage? And he got his head kicked off, and I think he died. Uh, again. Yeah, that just made Pac mad. Don't make bastard Pac mad. Pac went over in a really fun match. This was a surf and turf match. It'll be funny. I'll show up to work. So someone will say, what did you do this morning? I said, I made my video. I just have to put it on YouTube tonight, I think. Yeah, because it'll take well, a few hours to, to do its video magic. Uh, Cody comes out. Quite simply says it's Tyler Nothing. Good promo. Quality promo. And it's the Dark Order versus Private Party. Whoa. Dark Order is still pretty cool. I, I still like Dark Order Super Super Smash Brothers. That's just really fun, though. Uh, again, great tag team work by both teams, especially the Dark Order, though. Uh, who was that? Oh, yeah. The only thing is that Evil Uno has to go back to being Player Uno because he does some pretty lax covers. Up. And even uh, JR mentioned that. It's like, yeah, he just kind of lays on the guy. It's like, I win. Nope. Doesn't happen like that. This is not video games. And you don't have your video game controller outfit on. Uh, then he starts biting the fingers. Heels! I love heel stuff. I love when the heels actually heal it up. That's what makes a heel a heel. You're like, oh, you can't bite. I have to boo you. Fatality. That was probably brutality. Uh, private party then decides to fly. And it's too great. And like, no sold one move. That was awesome, though. Um, Evil Uno does that electric chair neck breaker. Whoa, that looks like it hurt. Like a version of like the one winged angel, except for he drops the guy, guy's neck across his knee. That looks awesome. Oh, that might be another great move. And then he did, get over here. That's always fun. I like I, I like it when they reference, especially old like old old school videos. Not so much cult classic videos because I didn't know. I had to actually look, had to look up like King Omega's character uh, when he had his entrance. The New Japan Lion logo looked like something you would see. That looked old school. That looked something you'd see out of like a Final Fan, like an original Final Fantasy game, or like the original Metroid, or the Star, or N. Of any like real old school Nintendo game. That was pretty cool. Get over here. That's fun. Um, then there was, of course, a double noggin knocker. That's always fun to heal miscue. Uh, the silly string, <laughs> the silly string followed by gin and juice, which is the finisher. That silly string looks amazing. The gin and juice, it's a hurricanrana into a cutter. That looks amazing. Um, my only qualm with this match. That there are way too many false finishes. It's nice when you see a false finish every so often, but when it's and when it, especially when they're not roll ups, because roll ups you can do pretty quickly. In fact, we'll see how a roll ups effectively used shortly. But too many false finishes for me. Still, overall, it was a good, fun match. This is a cheeseburger of a match. I have to get shoutouts in too. That's okay. I'll do that for the second show. For the second part. Uh, then there was a Chris Jericho promo um, where Sammy Guevara was just bringing him bubbly. Uh, a little bit promo to hype the matchup for again this weekend, which I'll be doing a review for. I still have 
23 more days on my suspension. So, and I want to see if I can do a triple A show because they're, they're fun. I need, I need viewers too. <laughs> and some drivers. Yeah, that helps. I have to figure out what I'm going to do. That. Um, but then we have the next match. We have Jamie Hayter and Emi Sakura taking on Shauna and Riho. My name is Riho. Oh, wait, that's the wrong song. Yeah, she comes out to like almost generic Japanese video game theme, like fighter game. Oh, wait. It is like a fighter, like a Japanese fighter game theme song from like the 80s. Like, my name is Rio and I dance upon upon the stage. Oh, that's the wrong. That's, that's, this is Rio, not Rio. That was a pretty fun laser light show. That was pretty cool. I didn't know they could make lasers do that. Oh. Uh, Sakura is definitely the he <laughs> heel. She just pulls the hair, tosses, I think, both Rio and Shauna by their hair. Shauna, however, has amazing European uppercuts, though. They're up there with, like, Zaro European uppercut. That's good. <laughs> I can still see Shauna's sports bra. And it's leopard print. Makes me smile. One day, one of these girls are going to have a, probably more so an impact. But, but there will be a wardrobe malfunction again. Yes! Uh, Jamie Hater's great, too. Again, you definitely know. The thing is, you definitely know who, who the haters are, who, who the heels are. And, and wow, I didn't realize how more athletic and how much more taller Shayna is, than, than especially Tiny Rio. Maybe Jim Cornette's right about Japanese schoolgirls. That'd be impressive. Uh, Hater just yells at ref. Uh, Rio and, Sh and Shana eventually do pull off some double team. And then there's like, <laughs> I think Emi Sakura does like, like literally like nails to the lower back. I wonder if that would feel good or bad. I know when women use her fingernails on my calves, it's like, Whoo! I don't know how the lower back would feel. That might actually draw blood and hurt. So, yeah, I guess I can see that. Uh, <laughs> She's definitely the strongest woman in that ring. Uh, and then, I haven't seen this move in so long. I think it was Emi Sakura hit the rolling Mexican surfboard. Old school moves that you don't see often. That's just fun to see. Uh, and then Jamie Hayter put, put, I think, Rio in the camel clutch. And did the double wet wheelie tour. <laughs> oh, you sick biatch. You sick biatch. That was funny, though. Then, Amy Sakura did a fun splash in the corner. Oh, wow. That looked good. <laughs> and when Amy Sakura went on the pin, to Shauna. Rio was about to get in. Jamie Hayter sneaks around. I don't know what she did. I don't know how high Rio jumped, but she went like flying from ringside. I don't think she was anywhere near. I think she actually got closer to hitting the barricade than the ring. She got yanked. I mean, she got some air too. That was pretty impressive. I'm like, whoa. At least if you were in the Chief you could see that happening. Uh, then someone hit a oh Rio eventually did hit a flying crossbody, uh, and then I was shocked that this wasn't the finish. Shauna hit a slice bread number two and a tiger driver, which I haven't seen in a long time. But that did not get the pin. Though. That was weird. Um, the tiger driver backbreaker. By I want to say Jamie Hader was pretty cool too. I mean, these moves should be fin finishers, really. Here they're just used as signatures and setups. Uh, Rio eventually does break up the pin. Uh, Rio does get the hot tag, but you know what? 
the heels win because Emmy hit a La Machistra on her. And, whoa, so that sets up one match for full gear. And I got about 10 more minutes left, so I'm all good for now, I think. Unless I get really distracted. I'll tell you what, this was fun, though. This was actually one of the best women's matches AEW's put on since their reception. This was a surf and turf match. Then there was an evil possessed Brandy promo. Does awesome Kong know like voodoo and stuff? Who knows? Uh, then it was that Cutler guy versus Sean Spears. Cutler, he comes out rolling like dice. Um, I don't know. It was an okay match. This match didn't do much for Spears because Cutler actually got in, he got in some offense. I thought this would be a pure squash match, but it wasn't. Uh, Spears, he just started to cost Cutler around after a while. Uh, it's pretty cool that I like it. The AEW announced team is not afraid. And actually, the impact in them seems not afraid to say, say, oh, well, this reminds us of of this wrestler and this promotion, because I, well, Jair does have extensive wrestling knowledge. So does Excalibur. They reference the Magnum TA a lot, which is always cool to hear. Uh, Sean Spears hit the Death Valley driver, and that was it for Mr. Cutler. Sean Spears wins. And eh, it was okay. This is when... This felt like an almost competitive squash match, but a little too competitive. That match really doesn't do much for either guy. It's a ham sandwich. Then we had the main event of the evening. Uh, it was Hangman, Page, Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega taking on Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho. Uh, Jericho so good on the mic. I think whatever server I use, they, they show like the in between stuff. The crowd just started to chant, asshole. He's like, I'm not the asshole, you're the asshole. And oh, they were stupid idiot. They're like, stupid John Wick, stupid Katie Vick. Oh, that was funny though. Stupid idiot. They don't chant, they would chant nearly as good as WWE crowds. Crowds, though. They're still getting used to it. Although there are a lot of too sweet out there. <laughs> and then, of course, when Adam, then, of course, the crowd just started to chant cowboy shit. They do like to drop the S word. Uh, Jericho, again, he's the best on the mic. Jericho, it was a tease for a while of Jericho versus Kenny Omega, which, if you watch New Japan, was an amazing match. They tease that rematch. You're like, nah, Sammy, give me the tag. My camera's not that. Doesn't, oh, there we go. That's where my camera goes. Uh, Sammy. Whoa, he ate some chops. In fact, he had a hamburger chest. And this, I mean, you could tell. He was just eating chops from everyone. Sammy was there to take the bumps. Eventually, Jericho takes out Paige. Uh, Jericho, he, he, he's a smart heel. He's a smart, calculating heel. He picks the spots. He lets Sammy Guevara do all his dirty work, take all the bumps. He comes in. He picks the spots. Because, uh, again, Sammy's chest turns into hamburger. Uh, <laughs> eventually, they, they try to fling Sammy on the ring. Hagar actually caught Sammy. And then it was Paige and Kenny Omega. And then, out of nowhere, Pot came in. And actually, Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho won the match. Chris Jericho won with a Judas effect. Paige and Kenny Omega seemed to be on the same page for a while. However, eventually, Chris Jericho hit the Judas effect on Paige. So that doesn't kind of hurt him that much. He's Kenny Omega, then he, he... Yeah, I think it was... I think it was Paige that, that eat the loss. Um, so Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho win. The heels win. But that, but I'll say this match, I'll, I'll get to what happened at the end. But this match was definitely a surf and turf match.
And then Pac actually comes out. Oh yeah, it was Page that they lost because he just got kicked straight in the nuts by Pac. Pac interfered. The ref didn't see that. Referees need need to pay more attention. That actually led to the Judas effect. Pac kicked Page right in the nuts. Square kick to the balls. Nothing fancy about that. Nothing sneaky about that. Um, and then Page starts to beat up Hangman Page. I forget the correct order. Kenny started to beat him up. Moxley came down, started to beat Kenny. Uh, eventually, I think Kenny... Well, actually, before that, Kenny did... No, it wasn't him. And then with that... I want to say LAX came down. No, it was MJF came down. Sam, Hagar started to beat up people, I guess. I don't know. After a while, it's everyone in the pool. So eventually, uh, the Young Bucks came in, started to beat up people. LAX showed up. I think LAX showed up first. And then the Young Bucks, they started to flip and fly all over the place. Just kind of jump onto everyone. Uh, MJF came out. Cody came out. So it was kind of fun. It was like everyone in the pool. And then they just like tease the uh, barbed wire broom for the cleaner versus the barbed wire bat for John Moxley. And again, AEW, when, even when they do tag team, they just do tag team right for some reason. Overall, this was a surf and turf show. So I have enough time to get in some full gear predictions. So I'll be posting this video eventually. Um, I do have to get some shout-outs there. Again, a couple of people did interact with me in Discord over there at the Woo Tube. Um, Julio Cesars. You, sir. Earned that six count. And tra -la -la too. You sir notice that Jordan Grace has back. Oh my god.
Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. So there we go. So I got that stuff out of the way. I put six. I did not realize that Jordan Grace was engaged. Right, one less pretty woman out there. Than me. So let's talk about some predictions. Again, it's a little too early for Dr. Tom. Probably off at a real job, or I better get ready for my job soon, or, or I won't have a job. And then go to my other job. And then I'll post this on YouTube because I do have to let the magical computer do its do its stuff. Let's see here. So this is my full gear prediction. And ooh, actually have that too. Actually, I'll make that like fine gear. Fine gear online for Thumbnail. Only bad thing about wearing glasses is that when you go sleepers, you kind of have to move everything around. Let's see here. So I'm not too sure if this is a full card or not. Um, I'll say as a little bonus, mainly because it was mentioned on CBS Sports. That's where I get kind of most of my wrestling information because they're actually, and they, tend to, they tend to be pretty good. I'm going to say. Let's start off with a bonus. Well, if Darby Allen versus Jake Hagar, Jake Hagar is going to win. He is way too big for Darby Allen. Darby Allen's a little skinny guy. Jake Hagar is an MMA fighter who I think he lost his last fight because he just kicked the guy in the nuts. That's just a quick way of saying, you know what? I just want to get out of here. I don't want to look bad though. I'm just gonna kick you nuts and get DQ'd. Because at least it's like it's like the fighting man's way of saying no moss. And then this should be really interesting because it's gonna be Britt Baker versus Bree Priestley. This could wind up being a shoot match. Mainly based on what happened. But I think they're going to begin to push Britt Baker. Brie Priestley eats the loss. But this is going to be an ugly match. Britt Baker goes over. Then we have Pac. Versus Hangman Adam Page. Oh, wow. What should this be? Who needs to win that? I have no... Oh. Let's see here. What's going to be that? I don't know. We'll see. Um, Pac versus Hangman Adam Page. This is going to be absolutely amazing. Wow, there's so many matches. That, that could be really fun. Yeah, it's not the match of the night, though. I think in this instance, Pac is a badass. And Hangman Page is going to do some cowboy shit. This is a pick -em. I'm just going to say Pac wins. There, there's no way around that. Bonus. And then... When I go into my coma after eating some homemade cr uh, triple crunch wraps, which I'll show you how to make, and I'll post that when I do my review video. I'll say in the snooze match, you know what? Rio's going to retain that belt. She just got that belt. She's not going to drop it anytime soon. Emmy Sakura won. The math <laughs> says, yep, Emmy Sakura stood tall with a lot of monkeys for a roll up. So Rio's going to win. That's going to be my meh snooze. Wow, I really have no stone cold lock. Might as well, might as well make this one it. 
So I have no idea. Actually, ooh, maybe that should be my Stone Cold Lock. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see here. And then we have the Young Bucks versus Santana and Ortiz. I want to say Santana and Ortiz go over. They're gonna win somehow. They're just gonna. They're. They haven't had a proper match yet. They had a squash match. So I say they'll go over. And then I think there's gonna be an. There's. I think there might be one more match. So maybe this will be a double bonus situation. So I think there's gonna be a triple threat tag team match. It is SCU. The Lucha Brothers. The Private Party. SCU just got the belt. Although they do have... This is a double bonus. By the way. SCU just got the belt. They have such a deep tag team division. They could really hot potato those belts. They really wanted to. Private parties eating the pin. It's just a matter. They'll probably have eeny meeny miny mo catch a tiger by his toe. If you can go eeny meeny miny mo, my mom told me to pick you because you are the one. By by randomness, it's going to be the Lucha Brothers. And again, that's my double bonus. So, wow, this is a double bonus. So, I have my snooze. Then, you know what? The Britt Baker match, that'll be my song called Lock. And then, what I think is going to be the match of the night. It's going to be Kenny Omega, the cleaner, picking on John Moxley. Mox. It's the barbed wire baseball bat versus the barbed wire broom. This is my match of the night. Oh, wow. Kenny Omega. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change that. John Moxley wins in probably the match of the night. So Moxley's going to win. Kenny Omega's going to go through the crisis of confidence, I think. That'll lead up to a story with Cody Rhodes. Because then in the main event of the evening, we have. Le Champion, the man who drinks all the bubble. Chris Jericho, the pain maker, going to take on the son of a, the grand son of a plumber, baby. And Cody Rhodes, I think Cody Rhodes is going to channel his dusty Rhodes, bleed all over Chris Jericho, make his mama proud. No, no, one, no one loses in front of their mother, okay? Uh, Cody Rhodes is going to win. He's going to become the new champion. That's going to set up something between him and Kenny Omega. Kenny's going to say, I want that. I want to shot the belt. Cody's going to say, eh, eh, eh. Your record sucks. You have to get some more wins. That way you actually make wins and losses count. So that's, again, my dual show for AEW. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, on probably Saturday, I might put it up Sunday. We'll see what happens then. I'll put up my reviews because I'm still on my, I still have 23, just 23 more days left. So it's going to go pretty quickly. My reviews for Full Gear. And I'll show you guys how to make your own triple crunch wraps.